When we had the refugee crisis, we saw the refugee crisis in Europe, we heard leaders of terror groups, radical Islamist terror groups, tell their members to infiltrate the refugees in order to get into European nations. We saw that happen in France, in Germany. Not hypothetical, we saw uh, people who would like to harm the West, radical Islamists, we saw them infiltrate and take advantage of weaknesses in the system in Europe. We see that here with drug cartels take, and human traffickers and other types of criminals taking advantage of our lax asylum laws, where if you bring a child with you illegally across the border, you are released after you know less than three weeks into the country and just told to come back for a court date, which of course, very few of them actually do. How long, we have to ask ourselves now, how long until our enemies see this loophole in our airport security and say, oh, well, huh, maybe we should send some of our operatives to infiltrate that? And, and this has been happening for a long time, actually, Liz. Whenever I was chairman of the Subcommittee on Immigration, Border Security, and Claims, whenever I was in Congress, we had a particular instance where we were concerned about the use of Mexican consular cards, matricular consular cards, uh, and their, their use and their uh, uh, counterfeiting and the sort. But we had one instance uh, that was documented that a, uh, an Iranian national actually acquired a Mexican consular card and made it across the border as a result of showing that. And, and so they, they would not have even been considered undocumented. And so there are all kinds of national security red flags that should be going up with this new policy that, quite honestly, not all of the departments in the uh, Department of Homeland Security are comfortable with. And you can tell that uh, as a result of what they're talking about and in responding to what's going on with TSA. USCIS and others have basically said, don't blame us for what the TSA is permitting to happen because we're not, uh, we don't, we haven't put our imprimatur on this. And so it's, it's, it's an issue for us uh, generally, but it's even an issue within the, in the Department of Homeland Security specifically. Right. Well, then who do we blame? I mean, it's a valid question because at some point the buck has to stop with somebody, whether it's the president, whether it's one of his cabinet secretaries, whether, you know, it could be someone lower level. Who is to blame for this and how do we change it? How do we fix it? Well, it's got to be changed from the top. It's got to be changed as the result of uh, a new Department of Homeland Security secretary that's going to come in and, and, and coordinate the operations of, of that one department. Uh, and I'm sure the president, whose plate is very full these days, is going, to, uh, is going to approach this issue the way he has other issues with regard to the border. And that is you can't secure the border when you are permitting individuals who have violated the border, who have violated uh, our laws with their first action in coming into the country, you can't, you can't do that when you're allowing that illegality, that lawlessness to continue. And unfortunately, this, is, this lawlessness is really being, uh, is almost uh, conspired with on the part of the TSA, who the rest of us are subject to every time we try to get aboard an airplane. All right.